Are we there? Did you do it? Did you hit the button? Are we live? Are we live? We're live. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> Wait for some people to show up like we always do. <laughs> waiting. Usually it pops up on my other phone over there, so I'm waiting for that to happen. There we go. Yay! See? That's how much time we have behind. <laughs> That's the lag time. Good morning. Good morning. Get some people to show up today. Yay! Welcome back. It's Sew Together Thursday today. So, <laughs> Sew Together Tuesday, part three. Um, we're doing the puff quilt this week, so we're back again for the third day. Um, we'll be hopefully finishing it up if everything goes right. Um, that's the uh, that's the idea. I'm Teresa Coates. I'm the National Educator for Shannon Fabrics, and we are on day three of our puff quilt. So this is what we've been working on this week. It's been kind of crazy. Um, so this is this is where I'm at after um, a late night of sewing. Okay, do, do, do. it's pretty great, right? Turned out super awesome. It's um, like you could see how textural this is. It's just. It's like a stuffed animal in quilt form. Um, it's pretty crazy and kind of awesome. So I actually, um, I kind of see why people love these things now. So I'm gonna still clean off some threads that I've got in places. So yesterday we talked about a whole bunch of different things about putting these together. Doing all of these strips taught me a few things. So um, if you were here yesterday, you saw that I put a couple of the strips together using um, the large wonder clips, these guys. <laughs> bag wasn't closed um, <laughs> so I used these guys yesterday to hold it together um, when I was sewing them I like used pins and then these wonder clips and they worked a little bit but I decided to do it with pins later and I have to say it worked much better um, just because the pins held it in place so one of the things that I did I'm going to show you um, these aren't sewn closed but what I did is if these were pretend this is a whole row and this is a whole row okay when I put them together um, they would already have the puff in there so what I did if I can find my pin cushion there it is um, is that I would I pinned the corners so I'll do that so I pinned the intersections of the corners where they came together so I could keep those nicely in check but then the issue was that this like the back one like to move down so if you remember yesterday I had to fix it in a couple of places and what I realized was happening was that this was sliding this direction so I would have um, more space over here that I didn't want and because it was only a quarter inch seam moving it an eighth of an inch was a big deal so what I ended up doing when I sewed the rows together was I slid it this way slightly so I could see the back and then I pinned it down here and that would keep all of the batting in check Okay, so let me show you on the big one how that worked. Hold on half a second. So here we go. So here's a row. So what I would do is push these, because this will be good to see with the batting in it, because that's what makes it a little bit crazy, is I would pin it over here. You got some extra in the back. Do I? Yeah. When it would only have batting in one of these and not two, or stuffing in one of them and not both of them but I would keep a pin here. So you can see how this would make it flatter and it would hold the batting over here and then I did the stitching. So this one I had to stitch over again to fix that, okay? So there were a couple places that I had to go back over, but that pinning seemed to help keep the back in check a little bit more. So these are a little bit more even seams um, than in some of the other areas, okay? So what I found was pinning that to keep the batting out of the way made a big difference rather than using the wonder clips. Okay, so the wonder clips are great, but they just didn't hold it as tight as I wanted it to. All right, I think that was actually my first seam that I did, not my last. Yeah. Um, okay, so that's where we got with that. That's what I learned um, by doing all of those strips last night. The other thing that I tried was doing, because we had talked about making it like more weighted, um, and you could use it weighted for a couple of different reasons we were talking about for... Um, reasons that people would want like what do you call it? like sensory issues um, that you would want it heavy because this could be really heavy it's extra heavy with the batting or the stuffing in it and if you added the poly pellets to it it makes it even more so you could use it for sensory issues but also I realized like oh you could make that for a picnic blanket or for a blanket that you took out for baby in the park and it wouldn't blow away so putting these at the bottom in a couple of places would be great so what I did was I took a square I sewed this to the bottom 
Okay, so I sewed that cotton piece around on three sides and then I stuffed it in here and sewed that shut. So that's what I've got on the bottom of this, is this extra piece, there's the poly pellets are underneath here. Okay, so I put an eighth of a cup in there and then I'm gonna pin it here and that's how I would sew it together with these pins in there. So you wanna make sure that those pins are far enough down that you're not gonna catch them when you do your quarter inch seam, all right? So if you wanna add poly pellets, that's how I would do that. Okay, that's these guys. And I would get this big guy, it's a big six pounder that you can get. All right, so there's a bunch of extra information that I learned. Again, welcome, I'm Teresa Coates, welcome back. Um, if you are um, new, <laughs> you'll wanna go back and watch the last two days. I um, appreciate you being here. Uh, make sure that you leave your uh, city state, your favorite quilt shop, all of that good stuff. We'd love to hear about it. Um, or a quilt shop that you've just discovered lately that you really liked. Um, I've definitely found some new places and also found, like, sort of rediscovered some places online that I haven't shopped in a while um, because I don't get to get out and go into shops. Um, there are some that I've, like, followed on Instagram or whatever that have sort of popped back up. That was the fabric order I got yesterday. <laughs> I guess it happens. Um, okay, so all of that stuff. These were my extras. So I had four or five. I think I have eight extra um, total. And those are just going to sit there and be their own thing. Okay, there'll be extras to show how to do this quilt. Um, all right, so once we've gotten the middle put together, so now I need to put together the edges. I'm going to move my extra bits of stuff that I won't need. Okay, again, this was, I used, oh, I used this for part of it. I only had the half bag of the regular polyfill. So I did that on two of the rows. And really, I can't tell the difference. I tried really hard to pack them about the same. Um, and I just mixed it up and I can't, I can't tell where I stopped and where I started. So um, it worked out fine. I'm actually going to give this a wash and see how it turns out. Um, supposedly, you can wash it and it'll be just fine. I'll report back on the I Love Cuddle page. Okay, all right, so I got some poly pellets hanging out with me, oops. Okay, so this guy should end up, if I did my math even sort of close, it should end up about 31 and a half inches. So let me see, oh look at that, it is, it's 31 and a half, I'm so excited. Okay, <laughs> yes, um, all right, so that's because each of these are four inches and then they become three and a half inches wide when I do the, um, stitching. I'm happy to report that this stays pretty flat. I have to give it a good little little stretch to get it to be um, exactly where I want it to do where want it to be. But I think it's going to stay pretty square, which is great because what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick this onto batting and then onto backing, and then we're going to self binding blanket it, basically. Okay. The first thing I'm going to do though is I'm going to put some edges on it. So what I want to do, and you, this is totally optional. Um, at this point, you could actually just put a bat backing on it and then bind it if you wanted to. I'm going to add some edges because I think it'll make it a little bit easier to do. So the first thing I want to do is to cut my um, my little strips for the edge. Okay. And remember that if you like what you see, if you like the Sew Together Tuesdays, you can share it. You can share the video today. Um, and you can just share the idea that we do this. I do appreciate it. Okay. So this is a 10 inch strip. And I'm going to fold it in thirds like we talked about the other day. Because that's how I like to fold the cuddle. Okay. And this is a C3. Somebody asked about um, what that means. So uh, again, the C3 is the flat stuff, flat cuddle, normal cuddle, regular cuddle. Um, we call it all of that stuff. The three is actually just because it is a three millimeter nap. So that's what the three means. Okay. All right. So I've got that. Now I'm going to cut it. I think I hid my rotary cutter. I did. Okay, so what I need is I need um, three inch strips that'll go around all the sides of it, okay? If I remember right, because I wrote the pattern and then I've sort of forgotten, but I think it was 32 and 37 is what I did. Um, so I'm gonna give that a shot, see if I remember right. Math, it's not my forte did not become a quilter because I like math. Okay, 
So I'm just going to even up that edge right there. And then rotate it. Okay, now I can get this up to the straight line on my um, board. And what I'm also doing is checking to the fold here. So if you can see this fold here, what I was trying to do is get this fold to be along a line of the um, board. And on this side, it's fairly even along that line too. It just comes off of it just a little bit. Okay, so that way I knew my fold was all right. If you don't get it folded straight, what happens is you get those little V's in your long strip and we don't want that. Okay, so I'm gonna do a three inch strip. And we're gonna try this and hopefully it all works out. Okay, so whenever I'm cutting cuddle, I try really hard not to move it too much. Okay, so I didn't take that other strip away, I just left it there. And then move this one there. Just line it up. Okay, so that way I'm not moving anything. Because every time I shift it, for one thing, it's hard to get right back into place where it was before. And the other thing that happens is every time I move it, it sheds. Okay, so I'm going to leave all of the moving until I get all of the cutting done. All right. Um, welcome, welcome again. If you have any questions, please leave them. I'm happy to answer any of the questions. And Hawk will pass them on to me. Okay, so now... Yeah? I will. Okay. Um, so now I've got my three strips. You can see, so if you look at this, you can see there's hardly any mess that came off when I cut it. Okay, all of that's going to happen when I move it. So if you're at home and you've got a dryer in your house, what you want to do at this point is you would take these, pile them up very gently. And when I say gently, I mean really gently. Okay, you would take this and you would move this whole thing to the dryer throw it in there with a wet washcloth, let it tumble around and it'll knock all that dust off. I can see the stuff that's loose on there, but if I don't move it very much, it's not gonna go anywhere, all right? So this is, you just move it very carefully. I don't have a dryer in my house or in my studio. So um, I'm just gonna get rid of the mess on the floor. Okay, so bear with me, but you'll see it'll start coming off, okay? So this is really, it's, it's, it's a thing but it won't start doing that until you move it around, okay? So I'm fine with it, so I'll just vacuum this all up later. And don't wring it out. Don't wring it out. So don't do this thing where you like try to push it off. Yeah, because what, hap what happens when you do that, because it's a knit fabric, you can see it already wants to curl a little bit because it's a knit. If you do this, it stretches it and makes this curl in like a little tube, okay? I bet there are a few people who are like, yeah, I've done that. It happens because we think like, oh, that'll help. But it's actually sort of counter counterproductive. All right. Okay, so lots of mess. We got it over there. Okay. The other mess on the floor, I'll deal with later. I've got more cutting to do. Okay. So now I've got these three strips, and what I want to do is I'm going to sew them together into a long strip, and then I need to cut them to the right lengths, okay? So I need to figure out my nap, okay, by doing the little petting thing, okay? So this is top to bottom. That's top to bottom. Okay, so I'm going to do this like I would for um, quilt binding, okay? And I'm going to lay these on top of each other. Okay, and I've left my selvages and I just leave them overhang like that. Okay, I don't cut them off, I don't do anything else. Um, I'm gonna mark this so I can show you guys how you can do that. So if you can eyeball it, you can eyeball it. But it's really easy just to mark the back here on the 45 and that's where I'm gonna sew it. Okay, so I'm gonna do the next one. So this will come like this. And then I'll find my next one. Let's see if this one, oh, that's going the wrong way. So I get the other end, okay? So if these two should be going the same way. So a lot of times what you can do is you can sort of just pet it with both 
both fingers and see does it feel right and it'll you can totally tell the difference and then I'll flip it over okay that's the easiest way for me to keep it in check as to where it's supposed to be which direction the nap is going all of that good stuff okay and I'll do the same thing here okay if this isn't perfectly 45 it's All right, so now I've got both of those. I'm just going to sew those. You can just stay right there. I'm just going to sew these really quick. You can get a different view today. Okay. And we're just going to sew that little line. Backstitch a little, clip it stick the next one in. Okay, one of the things that um, I found that makes it a little bit easier if I'm dealing with these sort of like the 45 and trying to get right in that corner is I can put the needle down, okay, and then I can bump the fabric right up to the needle, put my foot down, and then start sewing. Okay, and I'm just going to sew right along that line so that I've got a 45 and I've got it in the right place, okay. When it's a seam that's this long, which isn't super long, but it's long enough that it's easy if you're doing 45s to sort of curve one way or the other. So drawing that line is just a nice safe bet. Okay, so then I'll come over here. I'll check it, make sure it worked. Okay, so now my little line goes across. Did just fine, so now I can whack that off. Okay, we want to cut it off at about three-eighths to a half an inch. I just cut it off. Okay, I don't measure it at all, I just sort of eyeball it. And then I cut off those dog ears you can see at the same time. Okay. So now I've got my strips, all right? Okay, hopefully that all makes sense. All right, so now what I need to do is I need to make a strip that's gonna go the width of the, the, the blanket, all right? Remember, if I stretched it out, I got it to the right length. It was three and a half, 31 and a half. So I'm gonna cut this. I'm gonna cut my little selvage off there. So I do want that to be gone. A little half inch. Okay, and then I'm gonna measure this along here to 31 and a half. Okay, and I'm going to line this up right along one of the lines on my ruler so that I know it's staying fairly straight, okay, because it's knit and it likes to move. So then I'm going to come over here, 31 and a half, and chop it off. Okay, so there's one side. And then... The other side, okay. Get that to lay flat. Okay, I'll come back over here. Again, 31 and a half. Okay, so these are my two sides. So the reason I did this is because I've got a 10 inch strip and they are almost enough, but not quite. And I don't really care if I have these little blips in here every once in a while. I should have only one, I think, that will have a seam in it, but we'll see, okay? Okay. Let's see if I can move all this stuff. Okay. So now I'm gonna set this aside. This is for my other two sides, but I'm gonna measure that before I cut it because I'm not always correct on math. Um, and since I don't have any more of that to cut up, we're gonna get it right the first time, all right? So what I wanna do is I'm gonna put this along one edge and then the other. So right now you can see that this looks like it's too long, okay? If I lay it on here, if I lay it so that it matches on this side and it comes over here, it's too long, but it's really not too long. It's just that this can stretch and pull open because um, it kind of wants to curl up because it's a knit, okay? But I know that it's actually 31 and a half. We're gonna sort of fight that a little bit while we're making the blanket and it's gonna be okay. All right, so now I'm gonna take this and I'm going to pin this on here. And we're gonna sew these together. 
Okay. How's it going out there? People show up? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> okay, nice, good. Got a nice crew. <laughs> good. Thanks for coming, guys. I appreciate it. It's always nice to know that, you know, people didn't give up on me after the first day. She can do it. Okay. Actually, I'm going to, let me see. I'm just going to see I'm going to measure it, and I can't. So I'm just going to pull, make sure that this is pulled nice and straight. I may have to do just a little bit of shimmying if I don't get it quite right the first time. Because as always with the cuddle, we want to make sure that we're um, not pinning from one side to the other. Because if we do that, if I start on that end and I just work my way over here, it's going to be way off. And I don't want that. I want it to be um, a lot more accurate. Okay, so you can see I'm pinning a little bit in between. And then I'm going to pin in between some more. Divide and conquer. Divide and conquer, exactly. <laughs> it's totally what I'm doing here. Okay, so I'm pinning my seam allowances first, or my seam intersections first, and then I'll go back and pin in between. Okay, so that I can get all that. Okay, so this will be another funky part where we're sewing with the, um, the stuffing in there, um, and that just really takes you just pushing it down and getting it out of the way. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna do the same thing that we normally do, and I'm gonna pin parallel to the edge so I can hold that it wants to curl okay so I'm just gonna fold, hold that back and pin it in place come on little guy maybe maybe I'm gonna do I need to be an octopus is what I need to do <laughs> okay you know what I do is I'm gonna clip it and then I'm gonna pin it because it wants to it wants to do that curl thing and if you've worked with cuddle very much you know what I'm talking about Okay, so I'm gonna, I can hold that there. Now I can sort of push that, that stuffing back and put a pin in here. Okay. So that little curl that happens, um, it is worse on one side than another. So like on this side, it's gonna curl and this side, it'll be flat. That's just the way it is. It's the way, it's the way that knits work. And so it really isn't anything that you've done. Um, so if you're struggling with that, it really is just like pull it back, make it stay where you want it to stay. And that's all I'm doing. Okay, so we'll, um, we'll have to do that the whole way and I'll just pin it down. And then you'll notice the other side will be easier. So that's the way it always happens like when we do the strip quilts. And you'll notice that one side will curl more than another and sometimes it, um, people think that they've somehow messed up. And it's not you, it is the fabric, it's because it's, it's just because it's a knit, it's the nature of knit is that, I don't know if it's the, yeah, it's the top side of that, um, wants to curl a little bit more. And I'm not sure exactly the physics of it, except that I know that it happens every time. Okay. So this is just, we're just gonna take it nice and slow, get it to work. And this area, so we're going to do this, and then we're going to be able to um, square it up or trim it if we need to. So if you don't get this seam, oops, pin it down further. If you don't get this seam terribly straight, we'll straighten it up after we're done. So this is a place where you can fudge, okay? And finding those places that you can not have to be so perfect is great. Where you're like, all right, well, I didn't do it quite right, but I can fix it quote unquote, later. Okay, put these pins in there. One more. Okay, and the trick really is just getting this to pull down. So a lot of people, like it keeps moving. I'm like, it'll keep moving. That's, that's the way the fabric works. So you're just gonna have to keep, um, keep adjusting it, holding it in place. And that's why I really prefer the pins. Most of the time is because the pins will hold it, hold it. Whereas the Wonder Clips tend to give it a little bit more flexibility, okay? All right, so we're gonna sew this and see how it works. And then if it works, then we'll do the other side. <laughs> if it doesn't work, we'll start over. Um, not really, I'm not starting over. We'll be like, oh, look, 
Uh, fire alarm, gotta go. <laughs> That'll be our, our MO. Just kidding. I'm pretty sure it's going to work just fine. All right. All right. Now we can come around. We'll move things. Looks like we had a little snowstorm over here. Okay. So I'm, I'll be curious. So I, you see I pinned it along this side. I'll be curious if it would have been easier to sew from this side, but we'll see. Okay, so maybe the next time we'll try it on the other side and see what happens. So I don't remember how I sewed the purple one. Okay, oops. Let me get that in. Pop the needle down. So I'll use that needle to sort of hold the fabric. And I'm going to get this because this has gotten pretty bulky and heavy. Okay, so I'm going to try to keep all of it over here on the sewing table as much as I possibly can and then just work this stuff around a little at a time. So I'm going to take this slow because there's no reason to go fast. I'm going to bump it up to a three and a half stitch length. Um, it's just a straight stitch, three and a half. And I'm going to do that because when we were sewing the other seams, we used a three. But I think that this is going to be a little sewer to, slower to sew through. So I'm going to make it a bigger one. Let's see, it's actually not doing too bad. Okay. All right. Oh, I like the little push under with the, with the stiletto. The stiletto is great for that. So we want to make sure that that's as straight as possible. So I'm going to keep, keep adjusting as we go, just to make sure that we're getting it nice and flat and not getting any little tucks under there. Do, um, do you have a batting preference uh, Ooh, sorry. Uh, between the difference between uh, using the cuddle and using cotton? Yeah. So I always stick with the polyester batting when I am working with the cuddle fabrics just so that the, well, I say always and then there are times that I haven't. So I try to <laughs> stick with the polyester batting with the polyester fabrics. Um, the cotton battings will shrink a little bit and the polyester won't. I haven't ever had a problem when I've done that, but um, I do think it's a good idea just to stick with the same kind of uh, substrate, basically. Um, we use the Quilter Select Poly all the time, and that's what I like. It's the Poly Request, um, and it's a really, it's what we'll use today, and it's a super duper thin, oh no, did I catch it? Um, it's a super duper thin batting that I really like. We'll find out when I'm done, if I caught it. See, this is why I'm like, okay, sewing it from the top will be easier. Next time we'll try that. See, this is why I do it first, you guys, is so that you can do it the easier way. Yeah, it wants to curl under there. And I can't see it. We'll get there. Okay. I want to be like, I have to concentrate. Talk amongst yourselves. How do you feel about like all these layers and, and what sort of machines uh, are going to be capable of sewing all of this? It's a lot of layers. Um, I will tell you that. You will definitely want to have a walking foot and you will want to take it slow. So my machine has a little bit of extra oomph because um, it's a higher end machine. So it can sort of take this a little bit easier. Yours, you'll like if you have a lower end machine, you'll just want to take it nice and slow. Okay, so you'll be sewing slower. You can't really see. See if you can sort of peek under here. I got my hands. Yeah, see, I've got my hand pulled on this because I'm afraid it's caught. It's coming over a little bit. So I've got this weird thing going on here where I'm using both hands, but one is underneath. Which is why I think if we sew it from the other direction next time, it'll be easier. We'll see how this works. Every time's an experiment, you guys. I did a little presentation the other day and I was telling them to be brave, try new things. That's what we're doing. All right. Okay. All right. So let's see how that worked. See if we got some places where I have to fix it. All right, so I'm gonna take the pins out first because that will let me actually check it. And then if I have to go back over and fix it, I can. Then I'll fix it from the other side. 
Okay, so some of these pins came out because they were going to get in the way, so I took them out. Okay, so what I'm going to do to check it, so there's the spot that I missed, okay, is I just pull it. All right, and that's the easiest way, so there's another little spot. So those seams were a, a place that obviously got a little bit, uh, were a little bit harder to do. Okay, so I'm going to put a couple of pins in here that will flatten down that spot, and I can re-sew it. Okay, where was the other one? Over here. Okay, so lesson learned from this is that it will be easier to sew from this side than the bubble side. Okay, so Michael, we're going to add that to the tips and tricks <laughs> on the blog post. So on the blog post, we always put little tips that I learned from sewing it along the way, and then, uh, yeah, sometimes we have to add to it when I learn new things. Okay, all right. So move that out of the way. Um, how do you feel about the difference between a regular walking foot and the, the digital dual feed? Can you compare those? Yeah, so the digital dual feed is um, something that like uh, Baby Lock, I think Brother has them too. Um, I like it a lot. It works really well with the cuddle, but um, honestly a good walking foot will be is just as effective. Um, in some ways, it's really interesting because in some ways one is um, easier sometimes to deal with than the other because this one we've got this big thing at the back that definitely gets in my way sometimes um, but it does have a lot of traction with the fabric which is great um, and the walking foot is smaller so it won't have that issue but I will say if you have a machine that has an even feed foot sometimes people will want to convince you that the even feed is just as good as a walking foot and I'm here to tell you that's not true um, you'll want to use a walking foot as well with this. It's just a different mechanism. Um, hold on, I'm going to back up and get that better. Let's see if I can pull that over just a little. Looks like we're going to have a tiny pleat there, and it's okay. Okay. Yeah, see, where's that little pleat? I'm not even sure. I saw it happen. It doesn't show up there. Okay, so now I have the other one over here. It's a wrestling match. It is a wrestling <coughs> match for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, so this is probably, like, honestly, this is as big as I would make it. I would probably be likely to make it a little bit smaller next time just because you have sections. Um, I was thinking it last night, and I was like, I wonder if anybody would ever want to make a big one because I think that would be crazy looking but also wonderful. Um, but if I did, I would definitely do, like, in sections and put it together in that way rather than this one large one. Just because this, uh, it gets, it's not, it's not just, it's like heavier, of course, because it has all the stuffing in it, but it's also just bulkier. It has so much mass to it that makes it a little bit harder to, um, to deal with. So a little bit more, we'll be okay. All right, so now I've got that side. I think it's all caught. We're gonna let it be there like that, okay? Then I've got this side and we're gonna bring it around and put it on here. Okay, so this one I am going to pin it from this side. And we'll see if that makes it a little easier for me. Okay, I'm not really caring which way my nap goes on this because um, it's on the side, so it's gonna not match on two of the sides. Um, so I'm just not gonna care on any of them. You can do, you can do which way you want to. If you wanna check it and make sure it's right, you go, oh, actually. I think that's going to work. All right. Sorry, testing out some things. So yeah, a walking foot um, is really important. The digital dual feed is um, a little bit nicer in that it like it pulls through a little bit more, but I don't know if it's actually the digital dual feed or the power of the motor, truthfully, because um, the motors do get uh, stronger. So it could be a number of things, but walking foot or a digital dual feed is really, really important when you're working with this fabric makes all the difference okay all right so I'm doing that same thing what did you say conquer and divi or conquer divide, and divide, and conquer. divide and conquer there we go Ugh. not to imply that it's war on fabric it no but we are definitely we are gonna win this battle and sometimes it feels like it a little bit you know the thing is that like you it, sometimes it's a little bit hard and it's, um, can be slightly frustrating and then in the end you get it finished and it's so wonderful that it, it kind of doesn't matter. 
And you're like, oh, it's fine, but it's so beautiful and soft. Okay, and you can see I keep trying to push down the batting. I keep pulling it batting. It's stuffing in there. I keep trying to push that down so that this will go underneath the foot. Okay. Um, if if I had a walkie foot, it's a little bit narrower. My my um, digital dual feet is wider, so I need to give myself some some space there that doesn't have the batting in it. Oh, that was what I was going to tell you guys with the poly pellets too. So if you add the poly pellets in there, make sure that you are using some sort of a a pin here to keep all of those pellets out of the way for when you're sewing you really you can't sew over them so make sure that you're uh, avoiding it okay i did a lot of this shoving it down like that when i was um sewing these clothes and when they're open you can really push it down to the other side and that worked really well now that they're sewn shut i kind of have to manipulate it a little bit more from a weird angle sorry i can't show you guys better I think we get to do this three more times. Okay. So what this will do with the little border and why I wanted to do this is it'll give you a flatter edge to do the, um, the finished binding with, which will be a little bit easier than doing the binding right on this edge. That was my, that was my thought is like to try to put binding right on this edge. Um, yeah, it would cause me probably more frustration than I would like. I unthreaded my needle. Darn it. Okay. Almost there. Okay, and what I'm kind of doing is I can kind of pull the batting down in the He's each little right square. Right you there. So okay. You your, your right hand oh, yeah. Just kind of push it down there. Oops. So then when I get to the next one, I'm just sort of pulling it. And then I can pinch it up here and get it to hold in place. Okay, so I just want to keep that batting out of the, or the stuffing out of the way while I'm sewing it. So I can squish it down, but I also don't want to catch it in the, the seam. Once I get it squished down a little bit, it's a little bit easier to keep keep down there. Okay. In the original pattern, which I think might still be available, um, you have to tell me they did it with they did it a little bit differently. Definitely, I revamped the way that I do the pattern, but they added a um, they used ruffle here instead. So they sewed the ruffle on and then sewed it back on and um, that would work as well. You would have the same issue. I knew I just didn't want to do a ruffle because I don't particularly love ruffles. And also I knew it would be a lot to add to the side. So kind of um, personal preference on a lot of this stuff. All right, let's see if it's easier to sew from this side. So now I can see a little bit better, I think. Make sure that that's going where I want it to. Okay. Try to get this all, <laughs> all the fluff over to the left. Okay. So I'm gonna manipulate this again with my little stiletto. Okay, and like I said, don't be afraid to go back and fix this if it gets if it gets a little off, like I did before. I'm gonna try to keep it um, a little bit better with one from this side, but also with my stiletto, I can kind of grab this underneath, make sure it's it's where I want it to be, then I can hold it through all the layers and help it feed through. So if you're doing this, just take your time. Like I would. I would just be sewing probably at half this speed if I weren't, you know, doing it in front of all of you guys and didn't want to take four hours of your day. <laughs> okay. Right. I noticed something about the way you're pinning this. Um, 
you oftentimes will either pin parallel to the seam or <laughs> perpendicular to the seam, and now you're pinning at a 45 at degree an angle. angle to the seam. Because <laughs> I don't want to keep it, you know, so anybody gets bored or just thinks they know me too well. Um, the reason I did this is because I could push down a bit of the edge without having to do the two pins. Yeah, it was just another way that I pinned sometimes. Yep. Sorry, guys. <laughs> no, it's great. <laughs> yeah. I knew there was a reason. <laughs> there is a reason. Yeah, it just holds down a little bit more of the edge without having to do the two different ones. I did this yesterday when I was sewing the, like, kind of the balls together, um, and that was, it seemed to work pretty well. Okay. Good. So I need to kind of keep a little bit of tension on it. Keep it feeding through right. Okay, and you can see I leave my pins in there as long as I possibly can because um, I really want it to hold in place. Okay, so just before it gets there, then I'll take the pin out. Don't take them out too early. There we go. Let's try that angle. Okay. And you can see, like, I have to kind of push down over here um, and get it to feed through okay. All right. And mostly because it'll just get caught up on there, and I don't want that to happen. Look at it. We made it. All right. Let's see how many we have to fix on this side. <laughs> okay. We'll do the same same way that I tested it before. Okay, I'm gonna give it a little, a little tug. See how it works. Okay, see, I thought it was gonna work better and it totally did. Okay, caught the back much better. Um, I'm gonna show you guys though, cause this is something that people are like, oh, but my seams aren't straight. Please come look at this and look how like wonka do this looks. Okay. it's fairly straight it looks ridiculous though okay and like right here it got a little bit shy so it's gonna it's gonna show a little tiny bit of my zigzag in there I see that right there you know what I don't care and if you really care you could take these zigzags out because they were just basting stitches as long as you've caught all of your layers here which I can see I've got the yellow the black and the white all caught you could take those stitches out if they really bothered you. But honestly, it's gonna look crazy from that side and lovely from this, okay? So it's gonna be like this, ta-da. All right, I'm gonna give this a shake because we've got cuddle dust, surprisingly. <laughs> Shock, I can't believe it. What, there's cuddle dust? Okay. <laughs> so now I'm gonna take this. Okay, oh, I think I was right. Of course, I can't stretch it big enough because my my board isn't as wide as I think it is. Much better when you're sewing to okay. keep the weight of the blanket up on the table. Right? Yes. As opposed to letting it come down into your lap. Don't let it come down into your lap. Really, like, it, what it happens, unless you can put, if you put, like, a box on your lap and then it sat up here, because anytime, even if it's in your lap, it's still pulling back and down off the table. Okay? So that's really a problem. Even if it's not falling off toward the floor, it's still having to fall off toward your lap. So um, years ago, if you know uh, Elizabeth Hartman, she's a pattern designer, years ago we were talking about quilting and what she does and which I found is, is useful in something like that if you're sitting like this, I've got a big table and I can come it over here, is that she told me she always flips it over her shoulder and then puts it through because it takes the weight off. And that would work in this situation too, is that you could sew it with it coming over you. Because what you want to do is keep the weight off the needle. So if you have it up at all, it's going to feed through a lot better, okay? I hope that, yeah, that, was that same, make it sense. Okay. So I just measured this. It's a little bit wider than my board. My board is 35 inches. I stretched it. It looks like two inches past that, which is what I had. I had done math before and it worked. Um, I'm really excited. <laughs> I did the math and it actually came out right. So we're going to cut two strips that are 37 inches and do this exact same thing again. Okay. Okay. So this is when I'm like, I wish my board were 38 inches. Some folks okay. were asking about mm -hmm. uh, where else and when else 
are you teaching right now besides the Sew Together Thursdays? The Sew Together Thursdays. <laughs> Thursday <laughs> and Thursday, Tuesday and Tuesday, Wednesday. Wednesday, Thursdays, Thursdays. <laughs> Just never Monday or Friday. Um, so I'm doing a couple of classes. We list them up on our Facebook page. Um, I'm trying to remember when the next one is. I'm teaching at Old Alley Quilt Shop, I know, is coming up. Um, there are some other ones. We have them listed on the Facebook page. And um, somebody might be able to send that link over there. But if you look in our events uh, tab on the Facebook page. So right now you're in the Facebook page watching me. And there's a whole bunch of like... Uh, not tabs, but what are the like categories, I guess, is what you would call them. And so one of those is videos where you can always find these videos later. The other is the events one. And that's where you can find all of the events that are coming up. And you'll see ones that are taught. They'll say who's teaching it. So there are some that are taught by me. And then there are some that are taught by our other brand ambassadors. Um, and so we are doing Zoom classes all over the place. Uh, I did one. I can't remember where I did it at. We did a self-binding blanket. Um, I can't remember. To be clear, all the classes are virtual, right? They now. are all and virtual. You, and you access them through your local quilt shops. Yes, yes, Got exactly. It. So, yes, they are all online. I won't be teaching in stores for a while. Um, but the Zoom classes are actually really great. Um, I really like them because it gives a chance. Um, and I know some of you got to do some classes with me, but we got to be. Um, one-on-one, uh, -on -one, so inspired, that was the name of the shop um, that I taught at. Um, but we get to be a little bit more one-on-one. -on -one. I get to help you out with, you know, you can ask questions of me uh, individually, which is great. Um, and it's really helpful for the shops. So, yeah, you can definitely see where we're teaching those classes. I'll be back in shops, you know, hopefully next year. And uh, getting back to what I love. But until then, I'm doing this, which I also kind of love. Okay. So now I've got these two, these are 37 inch by three inch strips. These were 31 and a half by three inch strips. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pin these in place and I'm going to flip this around the same way. Okay. So it's easier for me if I pinned it this direction. So I'm going to make sure I'm doing that again. Okay. Now I'm going to do the same way that I'm going to in beginning and in between okay actually I'm going to stick two pins in here so I get that nice and secure because these are going to match together super easy because they're both really flat okay and we're going to come down to this end and do the same thing okay I'm going to put a couple of pins in here to hold that. And then in between, I'll have to um, give it a little bit of a tug and make it match. All right. So this is where it seems like it's not right, but it actually is. Okay, so if I just give it a little bit of a tug, it fits in nicely. Okay. Because it just wants to curl up slightly because it's a knit. And we're going to make it not do that. Okay. And we're going to enforce that by adding some securing stitches when we're done. And I'll show you how you can do that. Okay. There was a question about the overall time mm -hmm. uh, that, you're, uh, that you're dedicating to this project. Um, a lot. Um, <laughs> this one, let me see. It took, I did it the other day. It took, I think it took me, I can't remember what I said the other day. I think it was four hours I think to sew all of the little squares and then yesterday was about the same to sew the rows together maybe a little bit more to sew the rows together um, my guess is it's probably about a 15 hour project um, obviously we didn't make you stick around for all of that because that would have been pretty crazy. So you can see I'm <laughs> pinning it differently this time because uh -oh. just randomly I just pin differently. And I'm like, oh, let's do it that way. I don't, can't really tell you what my thinking is all the time. Sometimes I just do it. <laughs> and we'll see. We'll see if this works out better. Oh, got it. So instead of doing the diagonal pinning this time, you're doing every I other did. one. You're doing a horizontal I, and right. then a perpendicular. Yeah. Parallel per and then a perpendicular. Yeah. Perpendicular. And got I'm it. not, you know. No rhyme or reason, except that I was like, oh, I'll just pin it that way. I think one, it 
it holds down the stuffing pretty well and so I like sort of my my go-to also I do a lot of things just like oh just doing it but those two ways work we'll see because the other way I pinned it sort of at the angle we'll see how this one does with sewing it together it might be that that angle actually works better like I talk about that a lot but it really is just sort of trying different techniques and seeing what works what doesn't and a lot of it is Somebody asked yesterday about machines, and honestly, like, it really is very personal as to which, which works best for you, which, you know, um, which technique works for how your brain works. It's not always going to be the same, and there isn't necessarily just a best way. There are some best practices, and there are, you know, I try to give you guys lots of tips that you can use to figure out your own best way, give you some options. But I do hope that you give a few things a try and don't just assume that I've got it figured out for you. Because <laughs> I am definitely doing things differently and I kind of do things, yeah, randomly back and forth. Okay, so there's that. All right, so that seems pretty good. I'm going to grab my extra pins. Um, so one of the things, so if you look here on the, um, the bed of my machine, you can see I've got a little bit more mess here than I normally do. And that's because I only just shook those things out just a little bit right here in the studio. Normally when I'm working, I'll go take this outside and shake it real good or vacuum the edges a bunch. Okay, so I'm gonna have a little bit more shed. So it's a really good thing to remember when you are working with Cuddle is to really, if you clean it first, you have very little mess happening. Um, and you can definitely see that in the way that it's worked um, today is that normally I don't have hardly any mess. And then today I have a little bit extra because I wasn't able to really get rid of the mess as much as I normally do. Okay, so if you get rid of that mess before it gets to your machine, the better. Also, don't let it build up on your machine. So like I saw it there, I'm gonna get rid of it. Okay, the same thing happens for the, uh, for the bobbin cases. I'm gonna clean it again because I can tell I'm losing more, more cuddle dust than I want to. Um, and if you're, you're using well, if you're sewing with anything, you should be cleaning out your machine. And I know we've talked about it before, but please make sure that you are. Okay. Remove that pin so I could see that the head was going to get in the way. Okay. Well, this seems to be working pretty well. Okay. And... Okay, and you notice that I do, I'm doing a quarter inch seam on these two. Normally when we do borders and anything like that, we do a half an inch. The reason that I stuck with the quarter inch on this part, um, and even on all the rest of it, because a lot of times I'll mess with it and I will make it a half an inch seam allowance to give me some wiggle room. I didn't with this because taking a half inch out of the stuffing was going to be a lot harder than um, trying to find a quarter of an inch that I can move the stuffing. All right, so that's why I'm doing it a smaller seam allowance, which makes it a little bit more fidgety than we normally have to deal with. Um, but that's why, it's because I really felt like trying to get a half an inch, because that would be clear over here and trying to get that much underneath my machine seemed like it would be um, much harder than I want it. Okay. There was a, a, a fun little side conversation uh, going on about um, when you sew the blocks together uh -huh. like, uh, it be the, the sort of the, the first step. Mm -hmm. um, it's possible to chain stitch those. Yes. So you do three sides of, of, a, of a square and then you skip to the next square? Well, what you, what you would do if you wanted to chain stitch is you would stitch the side, the side, the side, the side, the side of all of your squares and then come back and do the next side, 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 side of all of the squares. Um, and you can do that. And I tried when I was doing the, um, the other one, the sample one that I did, I tried chain piecing because I had seen that done with some other tutorials and I thought, well, maybe that's better. And then I just found that I didn't like it very much. I lost, um, not lost control, but I lost uh, sight of which direction the nap was going easier. So because with this one, we talked about it a little bit the first day, this nap is all going the same direction. Okay, so that when it goes backwards, you can see that, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so when it goes backwards, it does that weird funny color. And then when it goes this way, it's all nice and smooth. So I worked really hard to make sure that that nap is all going the same direction. All right, if I were trying to do them in a row, I knew I was gonna lose track of it. 
about which direction the nap was going. And so um, I worked individually and laid them out as to which direction the nap was going and sewed them in a particular order. We talked about it a little bit on the first day. So if you mm -hmm. missed that, you can go back and, and catch up on that. But yeah, you could totally, and if I were doing it with um, a print, I would um, be totally okay with doing that. If you were doing a print or you were doing a lux cuddle, um, you could chain piece them. I decided not to because I really, I wanted this nap to all work like this. Oh my gosh, I think there's one that's sideways. There is. We just won't pet that one. Um, but I did want to work really hard to try to get the nap going in the right way. Okay, so now I'll take my pins out. So that way I actually liked better. Okay, so that was easier. It kept it sewn down a little bit better uh, when I got to have those pins in there parallel to the raw edge versus at an angle. So I'll give it a check. See if it, whoops, see, sorry. See if it works. I have not seen any holes. You seen anything over there, Hawk? Nope. Okay, good. Okay. Hey, I'm seeing a thread. Okay. All right. So and then we'll come over here and we're going to do this one. So this is my last one. I'm going to pin this the same way because now we've tried it. This is the joy of doing this, right? We've got four sides. It means we have three times to figure out which way is the best way. Um, when we do, uh, when we do the self-binding blanket, I always tell people it's four corners and by the fourth corner, you'll have it figured out, um, which is exactly what's happened today. It's by the fourth corner, by the fourth side, I've got it figured out. So now we do. There's a specific request that if you go, <clears throat> when, when you go back to mm -hmm. traveling the country and teaching mm -hmm. classes in person, <clears throat> can we please still do the, on the Sew Together two days? <laughs> can you guess who that might have been from? No, I don't know. Vicky from Scotland. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, one of the Vickies, because we have a lot of them. Got it. Yes, because Vicky from Scotland is never going to end up in one of my classes. Sorry, but thanks for coming. Get to never be here online. That's right. Maybe somebody in Scotland will make me want to come over and teach a class there. That sounds great. Talk to your local quilt shop. <laughs> sounds like a really good reason to visit. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing again where I've got, I've got my ends pinned and then I'm going to kind of go in between, try to make sure these are, these are matching. Okay, that my, um, the width is the same basically. Okay, so I'm going to do it again over here and you can see I can kind of tug it and then I kind of eyeball where I think they're going to match. Then I'm going to go in between and pin those um, seam allowances and that seemed to be the easiest thing. Or not seam allowance, I keep seeing that. The seam intersections. Okay. We'll get those pinned in place. And then if I saw that there was a space that had way too much, then I could repin something. These look like they're gonna fit just fine. But by doing those intersections first and then pinning those others, I can sort of get it um, figured out first before I pin everything. And then I'm like, oh, this is too big over here. Okay. All right. So now I've got the intersections done. So then I'm going to do that little thing. Oh, I have two more over here. Um, and then I'll do that thing where I push the batting stuffing. <laughs> it's like me and nuts and bolts and I never can remember which one is which. And I call them the wrong thing all the time. Because I always call them bolts, but they're actually nuts, the things I use for weights, I think. Right? Is that true? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Okay. My thought is, y'all know what I'm talking about. So that's okay, I think. Okay. So I'm just pushing that down, sticking a pin in there. And what that does is it just pushes, you can see it pushes all the bat, the stuffing this direction. Okay, so it's over here and I can get a flat edge here to sew. And that definitely is working. But I kind of have to um, grab it with my hand to push it down. So just so you know, you'll have to kind of grab. The other thing that you might be able to do, let me see if I could give it a shot. I wonder if I could use the stiletto in there. Hmm, I can. So if you have some um, difficulties with the fine motor skills, I can kind of grab the, the stuffing through here and push it down. 
with my little stiletto. So yeah, I knew that thing was, was good <laughs> for all sorts of things. Okay. So yeah, when we do the classes on the road though, just so you know, like we don't do fancy stuff like this. This is extra special because I'm here and we can do three days. So I'm really glad that we get to do it. Um, we're doing uh, robes coming up next week and then we have that Cuddle Kids Camp um, that's in a couple of weeks. And I'll show you those patterns again at the end. If you wanna get um, those ordered before that starts, it's a good idea. Um, We'll try to give you that information for all of the classes as we're going. So if you need to order patterns, you can get them before it starts. I think it's helpful. I know some people do actually sew along with me. And that robe has been asked for a million times. Okay. All right, more, more. All right, and then we'll move to a new step, you guys. <laughs> so this is why step outs are nice. Like that's what we call them when we show you like, you do this step and then this step and then this step and they're already finished for you. But in this one, I wanna show you how it really works. And look, I'm learning something along the way too. So this pattern, the way that I am mostly putting it together is available on the blog. It's probably up there in a comment somewhere. And then you can download the pattern and it's just a really um, easy little pattern that I wrote up. And then I'll get a, a nicer one that we'll have available later with more pictures and stuff. The one that I put up there for the blog now is really because you've watched this so you got to see what I did. Um, and then if you have questions, you can always ask. Okay, all right, so let's mm. sew this side and then we'll be done, I'm so excited. Well, not done, okay, but we're done with sewing the little sides on, which is great. Okay. All right. So you really, you can see like, it'll sew the cuddle just fine. And then we get to this and it's like, oh, the bubbles. So whoever, whoever decided to call it a ravioli quilt, I called it that on my Instagram post yesterday. And I had a couple of comments about how funny that was. So I think that's what we need to call it. If it's a cuddle, it's a ravi or it's, yeah, it's a ravioli quilt. I think it's a great name. And I'm just trying to eyeball and make sure that my edges are matching here. Okay, so I can I can see that raw edge over there. I'm trying to so show some of your my weird techniques here. The bigger picture. Yeah. So the robe is going to be uh, in cuddle. Right? Yes. Yeah. yeah, I will show it in all the variations. So in uh, Terry and in Embrace and in Cuddle, but we're actually going to sew it in the Lux Cuddle. So we'll show how to how to do that and give you some um, yeah some tips on on sewing with it and it's not going to be lined so it's a question we get a lot is like are you going to line it and we're not because the back of cuddle like we work really hard to have a fabric that's super nice which means it's nice on the inside too so that knit backing is actually really soft and will be totally fine on your skin okay it's a difference between minkies that um, if you get a a uh, different brand of minky, you'll notice that the backing won't be as soft. And um, we work really hard to have have the best. So you'll notice it, it makes a difference. Okay. Trying to get those to evenly line up as we work our way through. We're getting there. Thanks guys, thanks for being here. Thanks for sewing with me. I like that there's the whole like sew together Tuesday people and like the I love cuddle people. It's like my own little sewing group now, which I really appreciate. I don't really know a lot of people who sew, but I know all of you now. <laughs> it's great. Okay. I also like that everybody gives feedback, which is kind of fun. Go, cool, but what about this? What about that? Okay. So I can see this wants to curl out and do some weird things right there. So I'm gonna try to force it over here. Okay, and I'm close enough to the end. So if this starts to like feed forward just a little bit, I'm just gonna let it. So see, I'm getting that little pucker right there. 
I'm not going to worry about trying to feed that in at this point because I'm so close to the end and it's such a little bit. I'm just going to let it come off the end. And it ends up being about a quarter of an inch off now, and it's that's just how it's going to be. Oops. Okay. It's one of those places that was like, eh, it won't really make much difference. Okay, so it's probably almost a half an inch off. I'm still not going to care. This is what I'm going to do instead, is I'm just going to whack that off. Okay. That was the worst sewing teaching moment ever, is I just like slid that rotary cutter right toward my hand. Please don't ever do that. Okay, thank you. <laughs> do as I say, not as I do. Don't ever move the rotary toward your hand. I'm sure we've all heard horror stories. Thanks for not bleeding today. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, <laughs> it's like my number one fear. <laughs> it's like one of these days. Okay, all right, so now, oh, look at how cute that is. Okay, so now we've got the border on all four sides, okay? So cute little ladybug border all along there. My cotton is fraying out there. Okay, super cute, right? Ta-da! Right? Yeah. Good, okay. So now what we're gonna do is, so there's two different ways that you could deal with it at this point, okay? Is that you could stick a backing on it and you could bind it, or you can do it like we're gonna do like basically a self-binding blanket. Um, so that's what we're gonna do now. So I did it 37 inches, correct? Yes, okay. What did I do with my piece of batting? There it is. <laughs> I just realized. <laughs> what was that? Is that a cloud of dust? No, I just realized that my batting is 36 inches wide and my blanket is 37. So, <laughs> so we're gonna trim it down. That's what we're gonna do. That's what's gonna end up happening. Um, <laughs> that's pretty funny. Okay, so I'm gonna move this just a little bit. What I want to do is I want to make this square. So this is what happens when I. Don't measure things beforehand, sorry guys. Okay, so I'm gonna make this a 36 inch square of cuddle. That we're going to get that to fit, okay? So if I need to take an inch off, I need to take a half inch off each side, correct? Yes. So you guys won't do this, okay? You're gonna cut a piece of batting that's bigger and then stick it on there. Sorry. Okay, so I want this to be a square. So I'm just trying to get all my space here. Make sure that the pins are not on your board. I don't know if you are one like me who's ever, you know, rotary cut right over a pin. For some reason, the rotary cutter doesn't really like it at all. And it will generally just decide to not work after that. <laughs> okay. All right. So I am going to cut this. So let me see if I've got. Oops. Oh, it might be a little bit bigger. 19 and 19 is, is what? 20. Come on, 19 and 19, guys. Help me out here. 38? 38? Yeah. Okay. See, so it might be big enough. Okay, so. So if we want 37 inches, that's going to be 18 and a half by 18. Or 18, 18 and a half and 18 and a half. Is that true? That's 37? I think so. <laughs> See, who knew you were coming along to do math for me? I also don't know where my sharpie is. Okay, so I'm going to measure this. So 18 and a half. It's a silver one. Yeah, let's should see if work. it'll, should work. Yep, there we go. So 18 and a half is 37, correct? Somebody's got a calculator out there? <laughs> That's where I'm going to mark it. I'm not doing that right now. 
Okay, that's all right. You don't have yeah. to. Somebody has a calculator. God, thank you. Okay. <laughs> I love you guys. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so now what I'm doing is I'm making sure that this is going to be square up here. Okay. So I want it to line up against the line that I just drew here. Because surprise, batting isn't always going to be cut exactly the size that they said. Okay, so I know that I can probably get to 37 then. So I'm going to mark it. Here's 24. So 24 plus 13 and a half, 13, sorry, right? So 24, 37. 34, 35, 36, 37. Okay, just make sure we're doing this right, guys. Thanks for hanging out. Me measure twice, cut once. That's right. Either that or, you know, have a box of other um, batting just waiting for you at the side if you mess it up. That's my MO, apparently. Okay. You got some you got some fast calculators out there. I really appreciate it, guys, because my brain doesn't work that fast when I'm thinking about sewing. Math is just a different math is just not my thing either. Okay. Alright, so now that should be <laughs> the right size. Okay, so what I'm going to do, what I really want to do is keep it this size, but have the marks on both sides, and that's just a pain right now, so I'm just going to whack it off. Okay, so we're going to hope that this is the right measurement, that all of our calculations that we just did were correct. And if not, this is the size of my blanket. <laughs> One way or the other, this is what we're getting, okay? <laughs> when people comment they're like she just seems like she's one of us and I'm like look this is how it works for me too sometimes things don't work out quite as easily as I thought they might okay okay all right so this should be a square right should be an 18 and a half inch square, and oh my gosh, it is. I'm so excited. Okay, it worked, you guys. <laughs> okay, we got to there. Let's see what we can do with this next part. Okay, so this is when I need the sheet. Okay, thank you. So I just use an old sheet. This is what I use when I um, teach classes. We just use a sheet to do all the spraying with. So if you've watched any of the other Sew Together Tuesdays, when I do like the strip quilts and we have to spray base the batting, this is what I use is just an old sheet. So the thing that's great about it is that you can just totally wash this when you're done and it, the spray basting will come out, okay? So rest assured that it will happen. It still has some stick on it because I don't wash it every time. Ta -da. Okay, and I'm just going to lay this basically over my entire sewing area so that I can spray baste and not spray baste my machine or tools. Okay, okay. Thank you, Hawk. I All right. You do, and I appreciate it. Okay, I'm going to move my machine down a little bit. My sewing table is not as big as I would um, want it to be at this point. So um, if I were doing this myself and not having to sew next, I would probably just put my machine on the floor so I had a little extra space. This lets me get it flat, and that's really the key is that we want to get it flat on the table. Okay, so I'm actually going to pop this up here, give myself a little extra spray area, okay, because it's so much easier just to clean it off or like just wash the sheet later. Um, if you uh, do get spray based on anything else, so if you get it on your cutting mat, warm soapy water will take it right off, 
all right? So it's not the end of the world. It's not like spray paint or anything, okay? All right. So let's see if it fits. Okay. This is where I'm like, is this going to work? Is this going to work? Okay. I think it is. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray baste the batting. And then what I'm doing is I'm going to make this fit to there. And that's how big my blanket's going to be. And it's going to want to pull up a little bit, and that's okay. Because um, when we're done, we're going to stitch it down in place. Okay. So I'm using the 505 spray. It's the stuff I love the most. Um, I've talked about it a bunch of times. It's great. It's from Odif. They make a bunch of products that I really like. Uh, the thing that I like especially about this is it doesn't stink. And it washes right out. Okay. So it says on the can that to remove, you have to dry clean. I think to remove all hints that it was ever there, maybe you have to dry clean. But I have washed and dried this sheet after using it in classes. I mean, I've probably used it in two dozen classes. Um, and it's been fine. It just washes right out. Okay. So that's been my experience. All right. So I'm going to get this nice and flat. And now I'm going to spray the batting. So a lot of times if you've been in classes with me or you watch the other videos, I usually spray the back of the fabric and then I lay it down. I'm going to do it differently this time for a couple of reasons. One, this fabric is cotton and so it's going to soak into the cotton. It won't soak into the polyester. Um, and normally, and this is a polyester batting, so I wouldn't. Um, the other thing is I'm going to actually want to stretch this into place and put it into place. So I'm not really, like I say stretching it, but it really is that you can see it just kind of comes together. Okay, so when I pull it, it's not that I'm stretching the fabric really. I'm just making it lay flat again. All right, but I'm going to do that and make it stay where I want it to. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to line this up along the edges that I've just cut. Okay. Okay, so I'm just getting those to basically match up. Okay. So this I can see there's a tiny little pucker there. I'm just going to lift it up, put it back down, lift it up, put it back down, okay? And then if you remember, to get it to stick, we get to hit it, okay? So where you get out all of your frustrations. It's great, okay? All right. <laughs> so then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to stick it a little bit more down this side. So I don't want to pull my batting too much because if you know much about batting, it likes to stretch. So we don't want to, we don't want to get it out of place. Okay. But then what I want to do is I'm going to kind of hold it here. I'm going to untack that just a little bit and pull it over. Okay. So the easiest way to do this would be like to pin it. You could totally put some pins down one side and then you can kind of yank it over a little bit. But if I just yank it just the tiniest bit, it totally is going to fit just fine. Okay. So now Go I'm over gonna... again why you decided not to put the, the spray on the quilt and on the batting. Because it won't soak into the batting. It will soak into the cotton. Okay. So these backings, these little quilt square backs that I did are cotton. And so cotton is much more absorbent than a polyester. The polyester, it sits on the top of it. So when I do this with um, the cuddle back, which we'll do on the next step, we'll do it with the cuddle, and it will just spray based on there. And it's totally fine. It sits on the top of the fabric. It's great. With the cotton, it'll actually sink into the fabric, which makes it a little bit less absorbent because the sticky is not on the edge. It's kind of into the fabric. We want the sticky right up top, okay? So that's really the biggest reason. Um, and then plus I was going to be manipulating this and I wanted it on the fabric that I wasn't manipulating. And you don't use a lot. I don't use a lot. Spray. You're not soaking it. No, no. I always tell people you're not spray painting. You're just sort of getting it. Um, you're getting it there so it'll hold it. You don't have to hold it for very long. So especially when you're doing the strip quilt, it's very little time. So we're not trying to get it to hang on forever, just for a little bit. So I'm just going to get this edge to match up. Okay, and I'm going to give this a tug over here 
and get it to match. Okay. So then, once I get that to stretch into place. New camera angles. Okay. <laughs> Tried it out. See what happens, guys. All right. So this is getting really heavy, just so you know. This is, you know, not crazy, but Cuddle always wants to fall off the table. And now we've got two layers of Cuddle and some stuffing in there, plus the batting. It all wants to come this way. So I have rolled it. Okay. So I rolled this up onto the table, and I'm bringing this back over the top. All right, so now it's just a pillow. I'm just gonna go to bed. <laughs> okay. Okay, I'm gonna spray base those corners a little extra because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull these up here. I'm gonna make it match my corners. And then I'm gonna tug this so that it fits. Okay. So this is all going to be a little bit of like, oh, tug, pull, push, pull, okay? What I would do if, if you had a bigger piece of batting than I did, okay, is that I would draw these lines and then I would tug it and put it in place and not cut it and tug it and put it in place. Okay. So let me get that unstuck a little so I can pull it. I'm going to see how this works. I do have to be careful because, like I said, the batting stretches and will kind of stretch out of, out of shape a lot easier. Okay, so like this little area doesn't want to stick right now. Maybe I missed it. Maybe it dried. Missed the window. I don't know. But I can just spray it again. Poof. Poof. Okay. All right, and it is not going to be perfect, and that's going to be fine. Because you know what? In the end, you will have this big, soft, fluffy blanket that people are like, oh my gosh, that's amazing. You're like, I know. It's pretty great, right? See, I got some little goofs back there. I don't even care too much. I'm going to loosen it, give it a tug. This is when you need to not have a camera in his hand. So I'd be like, can I pull this and you can pat it? <laughs> it is oh, kaze. I will figure it out. It's like, I don't know, round, round six on the wrestling match. It really is. I know. It's craziness. But in the end, it's going to be beautiful. Okay. So I'm going to let that be close enough. Look at it. It's becoming a blanket, you guys. It's starting to look really like something. It's very exciting. Okay, so now, oh, no. Okay, sorry, I thought for a second. I have to do this and then undo it because I didn't cut that out first. Pondering, pondering order. And I think I'm just gonna, I'm gonna wing it, you guys. <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> okay, I forgot I didn't even cut this anywhere close. So I'm just gonna put this down. So that's top to bottom. That's top to bottom. Okay, so when I put my um, blanket together, I want the naps to work the same order. Um, it'll be fine if it didn't, but I would like to try. Okay, so what I need is it to be at least an inch bigger because we're gonna make an inch border on this. You know how people always say, you always make it look so easy. I kind of don't think they're going to say that this time. <laughs> it's not super easy, but it's worth the effort. Okay, so there's, there's my smooth, see? So nice. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm like pondering, which way do I do it? So normally I would like to lay it out on here, but I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay it and then I'll turn it over and make sure that it's nice and flat just because the top is so puffy. Because it's 3D, it just really changes how 
we deal with it. Okay. So like I said, I want an inch border. So I'm gonna make sure I've got that. I'm gonna get that nice and flat. All right, so I can see that's nice and smooth on the back, just fine. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this up. I'm not gonna flip it like I normally do. I'm just gonna roll it up and I'm gonna roll it down and get it on there, okay? So what I would do if I were you, because you, ha you would have the time space wherewithal to do it, is that when you cut this piece, this piece should be cut a couple inches larger and then spray base this onto it and then trim it to just one inch larger. I still have the big wide thing, which is making it a little bit more, um, just more to deal with. Okay, so I would have it trimmed down, whereas I do not. Okay, and then you would have your straight edges. So I have a feeling my edges will end up being not quite as straight as I want. And that's okay. But if I'm gonna teach you how to do it, that's me what I'm gonna tell you. Okay. Just to cut that out first. Okay, I'm gonna check my back, see if I need to fix anything. I don't see any big puckers back there. It's okay? Nope. Okay. Then I have one more little bit to do, and then I'll cut out that fabric. Okay. So I just want to make sure that this is nice and smooth before I spray it, because then as I lay that down, it'll work. Okay. All right. Okay, I think I got a little off there and I don't know how. That's all right, we'll figure it out. We will make it work. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna whack this off so that I have some extra, but not so much extra. Because this is a lot to work with. Okay, like I said, I need to have an inch border on either side, but I'm gonna cut that down after I get this to a more manageable size and then I can get my sheet out of the way. Okay. But don't bump. <laughs> okay. All right. There we go. All right. So now that can get thrown on the floor. This can move out of the way. Oh. If you notice how beautifully those scissors just cut all that fabric, those are my Kai's. So if you ever wonder which scissors I like and why, that's why. Because <laughs> those babies just plowed right through that. Okay. Okay. So the back of this is funky looking because it's basted to it. Okay. It's going to be okay. You could do the same thing, get to this point. You could trim it and then bind it. Okay, so that's absolutely um, what you could do. We're just gonna add a self-binding corner to all of these. I'm gonna show you how you do that. Um, and then we'll do a self-binding, like mitered corners on it. Okay. Okay. Try to make sure that that's all smooth and stuck. Okay. So where I have little blips where my batting is, it got stretched out and didn't quite work. Trim it right off. Okay, look, square corner. It's like it was there the whole time. So th this blanket, you've added this layer of batting, and you've obviously got the stuffing in the raviolis. It's gonna um, weigh like a million pounds. Right. So what they're asking? Well, no, it's it's more like, like you don't always put batting in a self-binding blanket. No. So is this to hide the texture of the raviolis? That's exactly what I'm doing. It's because the back of it is so like weirdly like this that I feel like that batting in there will sort of hide that a little bit. Um, and then what we can do is afterward, we can sort of um, 
you could hand stitch some corners down you could stitch across the whole thing i'll probably see if i can get this underneath um, a different machine and um and stitch some little bits here i may just hand stitch it in these corners to sort of tack it in a few places okay um because yeah i wanted to hide that lump a lump thing on the back it's got to be a real word for it not the lump a lump but it's super lumpy <laughs> like i didn't really love it okay sorry i'm doing some measuring in my head trying to hope that i was right okay so what i'm doing is measuring one inch past this okay so oh i might have oh you told me we do i have a big one here Okay, so this will fit in that area. So my six inch ruler doesn't want to fit over that very well. And it was causing me to feel like I was going to be super inaccurate. Okay. okay. So this part here is a little bit off and I don't really care. I'm not going to follow that one inch perfectly because look, I can push that up there and it's fine. Okay. So I just want to get an inch straight across here. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay. Okay. So any of these little areas where I feel like it's not sticking, I can just kind of come in here, do a little spritz. Okay. Try to get this evenly, one inch across. Okay. Get that out of the way. What, are they laughing at me? Uh, no, Monica's really happy. She, I think she was the one yesterday that mentioned the ravioli. Oh my gosh. Such a great name. It's the right word. It is totally, so if you do it with cuddle, it's a ravioli quilt. I think we can make it a thing, you guys. I really do. I think we should. I made it a hashtag yesterday, so let's do this. <laughs> Thanks, Monica. Yeah, <laughs> such a good name. So appropriate. All right, so we're going to keep doing it. See me having to hoof it around there? It's that ruler nice. comes with the DIY. Yes. Right? Yeah. Yep, which I'm gonna, I'm about to throw some magnets on this. So get some heavy things if you don't have fancy magnet board. Okay, cause this definitely wants to, wants to move on me cause it's heavy. Shove this up. Get as flat as I can again. Okay. Keep on going. So I just want to line it up with what I cut before. Make sure that I'm basically staying in the same line. Okay. So one more edge. Right. Oh, one in a little bit. I didn't cut that whole edge before I turned a corner. Okay, so I'm going to stick a magnet over there. All right, now we're going to do it again. I want it to stay straighter. Come on. Okay, this is what I say. Get a get a, your partner to come help you. You definitely get some cans of food, something to weigh this thing down. Cause yeah, definitely wants to do things. If you have a bigger table, it would totally work too. It's just I can't lay the whole thing 
on my table. So I've talked to you guys about that before, is getting as much on the table as you can. My table here is really, it's the size of my 2436 mat. So it's not as big as I would like it to be. Okay, that is just not wanting to stay where I need it to. better. All right. So that's going to be a little bit funky and I'm going to fix it later because I want this line to be straight. So I'm going to shoot for my end and the area that I did here and then I'll fix the other in between. Make it work. All right, and then I'm looking too at this corner. So this little line here, I wanna make sure that I have a fairly square corner because um, that's gonna come in handy when I do this next part. I'm gonna need that to be, I need that to be square. All right, there we go. Just throwing it all on the floor, okay. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make my little mitered corners. Okay, so if you had this on a piece that was um, marked, it would probably be slightly easier, but we're gonna do it like this. Okay, so here's my, my inch and my inch. That's gonna be my border, okay? And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line up my 45 here on the line that I just drew draw a little corner okay so I'm gonna do this on all of them then we're gonna turn it like this and sew it okay so I'm going to put my pin in here now so that I can come back and sew that the other thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold this down and I'm gonna put a little pin right here so it doesn't become unattached because this is gonna get some wear right here and all the sticky is gone because I just pulled it off not sticking to it so I need to just hold this in place so it doesn't get doesn't start pulling back more okay so I pinned it through the back side okay and I'm gonna do that on all the corners so here we go so this is how you do a self binding blanket so when you do them this is what you do so my border is gonna be one inch so I'm gonna pull that back do the one inch the one inch Line it up on the line that I drew. And draw my line, okay? So same way. I'm gonna do that same thing here. Pull that back, pin this, fold this over, and pin that, okay? Okay, how are we doing with time? What are we looking at? Okay. okay All right. Hour and a half. Yeah. Right. So we're gonna do we're gonna do this part and I'll get it to the part that I've pinned it. And then you guys are gonna have to join out of cuddle to see it completely finished. <laughs> it's my little sneaky way. I planned it that way, you guys. No, just kidding, I didn't. But <laughs> but if you join me there, I'll post the whole thing up there later when I get it all stitched and stitched down and all of that good stuff. Okay, but I'll get it to the point that I can show you how it works. All right, so I'm gonna draw this one. Same idea. Okay. And the way that I do this with these mitered corners, this is something that confuses people sometimes. So you can see I, I did it. And then this edge is always gonna come up so that my raw edges are at the top. Okay, the fold is at the bottom. And that's important when you're sewing it. It'll make it a lot easier to sew. Okay. We can explain that when I get around there. One more. I just lost the ruler. There it is. Okay, I'll get that pinned back. Okay, now I'm going to mark it. 
That got a little wobbly. Just straighten it up, no problem. Okay, so there's an inch and an inch. And I gotta find the right way of doing it. There we go. So lining that up on my seam, doing a 45. So the nice thing about these self-binding blanket corners is that they actually like the 45 doesn't have to be perfectly 45. Um, but you know, it's close and that's what counts. Okay, so I'm gonna pin this. All right, now I'm gonna sew all four of those corners. All right, get my pins cleaned up. Okay. Sewing machine has a hat. It does indeed. <laughs> Happy birthday, sewing machine. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to get these around here and I'm going to sew each one of these little corners. Okay. I'm sewing these with a, um, I'm going to bump this down to a three stitch length. I'm going to sew from the raw edge over to the fold and then clip it. Okay. And because I know I'm doing these right, I'm just going to go ahead and clip them every time I do them. Okay, and then this gets flipped like this, and we have a nice little miter, okay? I'll do the next one. Okay, and I don't want to move this too much because it's really just basted onto the backing, so I don't want to, I don't want to futz with it too much. So wait, let's go. And I would definitely want to make sure I'm backstitch there, go forward, backstitch. A little cuddle dust right there. I don't want that to get into my bobbin case. Okay, there we go. Flip that. Two. Ooh, ooh, that gives you the <laughs> <laughs> We're halfway there, man. Halfway there. Okay, same idea. Stick it in. We're going to stitch forward, stitch back, back stitch again, flip my thread. Okay, and I'll cut my corner. You'll notice that I take it off the machine and cut it down here so that any sort of cuddle dust that falls will definitely fall down there and not in my machine. Okay, last one. Okay. All right, there we go. Okay, so now, oof. Okay, now we've got the corners. We're gonna tuck these guys up into the corner and we're gonna fold it down. Okay, this becomes the binding on my quilt. Okay, so I'm gonna stick that one right up there into the corner. Okay, you could see these little bits here. It's held the, held the fabric down, the nap down in the seam. So we're just gonna come over it with a little stiletto and pull that up. Okay, makes that corner look so much nicer when it's all done there. Okay, so I'm gonna pin that. And then in between, I'm gonna pin everything. So this is what I'm not gonna make you guys watch, is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pin this so I can show you Oh, and we have a winner. I saw that came up. Um, is that I'm just going to fold this down one inch all the way around. Okay, so this is when my handy dandy ruler is going to come in handy. Okay, mm -hmm. and I'm going to measure these. So every once in a while, I'm going to make sure the stiletto is like, no, I'm really important. I'm staying in the picture. <laughs> So I want to make sure that it's one inch still, okay? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pin every so often, then I'll come back and pin in between, okay? This is the important part is that I'm still getting this one inch, one inch, one inch all the way, all right? And this is what's going to create a super clean little border. So with this, then I'm just going to, um, I'm going to pin it and then I will stitch it. And I'm going to stitch all the way around on this one 
and um, I think I might actually do a serpentine stitch. I tend to just do zigzags, but I usually don't use a cuddle three for my self bindings, but I want to. So I think I'm just going to do, I'm going to do a, um, a serpentine stitch on it. I'm going to give that a try. Okay, so I'm going to just pin this in between everywhere so it's not going to move. All right, because I need this inch to stay a nice inch. You could do it larger if you felt like it. I didn't want to take up much of this and I didn't want to make this a really big border that I covered. So I just did an inch wide here. Okay, but I'm going to pin this whole thing. And I'm going to come back and in between here every once in a while, I'm going to do another one. So I'm not going to do it quite as heavy as I would normally because this is staying pretty well as it is. Um, and it's not a huge border that it can move too much. Okay, so I'm going to trust that it's not going to move on me a ton. Okay, I could, you know, do one side and then be like, mm, I'm going back and pinning more. So we'll see. But we're going to do the same thing around all the sides, just like this. Okay. All right, so let me, um, I'll put this in the machine and show you how it'll work, okay? And let me, um, let me do that and then we'll get all of the other stuff taken care of. Then I'll, like I said, I'll finish it. We'll post a picture of it later, both on the Shannon Fabrics page and on the I Love Cuddle page, I'm sure. Um, just so you can see it all done. Because what I wanna do too is do some stitching in here. You could do um, additional stitching in here. You could do it in any of these. You could do it all over the place to make it look um, a little extra tidy. Okay, I'm gonna see if I can get my serpentine stitch. There it is, okay. I'm gonna stitch just for a second on another piece of fabric so I can see. I always recommend that you give it a try first um, just to see how it works out because the serpentine stitch will do it differently on um, cuddle versus anything else, okay. So, because cuddle is its own special thing. So I kind of just look at it and see like, oh, how do I want it to stitch? Oh, like that? Okay, cool. This is a pretty interesting size of blanket. Is there um, a, sort of a use that you have in your head for a size of blanket like this? What I totally, yeah, it's a, it's a little bit, it's a bitty blanket. They have them larger. This one turns out really small because it's four inch squares on the back. So if you wanted a larger blanket, all you're going to do is make bigger squares. So you can make it whatever size you want. I would probably, if I were going to redo it, I would make the back square five or six inches and then make the top square, the cuddle square, an inch larger than that, okay? So if I added an inch to all of these squares, that's nine inches larger. So if it ends up now at 37 by 37, nine inches is what? 46. 40, not 46, 44, I think. Um, is it 46? 46, okay. Um, Anyway, it would be a larger quilt. You could also do it rectangular if you wanted to. What I was talking about with Hawk this morning that I thought would be, this would be a great little baby floor blanket, like to take to the park, to take outside, throw it on your living room floor. This is super cushy, like a little mattress. Like it's crazy, crazy tall um, in its softness, which I think would be a great place, um, just for, great for a little baby to lay on. So um, newbies that are still just laying around and kind of doing the, wah thing and not really moving too much. Um, I think this would be a great blanket. This, this size would be perfect for that. I mean, like this is just a great size for a little baby. If you want to make it bigger, just make your squares bigger. Um, that would be the easiest way of doing it. I mean, you definitely add more squares, but having bigger squares would be the easiest thing. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that would be, that's what I would use that for. My children are not having grandchildren for me anytime soon. So I'm not gonna go with that. Okay, so let's see. So I'm gonna do it at a 1.6. That was at a 1.2 and I didn't really like that as much. Okay, so this is what I do as I sort of just see. So this was a 1.2 right here. <laughs> I have like sticky and um, stuff on me. So this is a 1.6 and a five wide. So if you wanna show this, this is a serpentine stitch. So show this over here. So this is a serpentine stitch, okay. So this, one, this stitch, this is what it looked like when I pushed the button, then I was able to adjust it so it was wider. The width is five and the length is 1.6, okay? So for me, like the length of 1.6, that doesn't really make any sense because it's clearly not millimeters in my head. This 1.6 is something that I can't quite figure out what that is, but I like this length better. 
okay? You could totally do it the shorter one. There's no reason why you wouldn't. Um, I'm just going for the aesthetic that I actually like. So, because I get to make it and then store it in my sample cabinet. <laughs> cabinet, <laughs> laundry basket Room. on the floor. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm gonna start stitching here. And then I'm just gonna go, and I'm just gonna show you this just a little bit, just so you guys can see. Okay, and you can see how much smaller this is turning out because of the batting and all the thickness in there, that it doesn't feed it through as fast. That was a close one. Okay, so let's see, can I get it to be shown yet? Oh, sort of. Okay, I'm just gonna take this. No, it's, oh, okay. Do you want to, oh, you might be able to see it. I'll keep sewing and then you can see it come out and see how it's working, okay? You can also see how I keep my hand back there to sort of guide it through straight. Okay, so I'll always keep a hand back here to kind of, to guide it through. Okay, so that looks pretty nice. Okay, so that's the way that the serpentine is gonna work. You could also just do a zigzag, you could do a blanket stitch, you could do all sorts of things. The serpentine is just sort of a nice little edge on it, okay? The interesting thing to note is you'll see, and I'll post pictures of this on the I Love Cuddle page, is that the serpentine, when it goes different ways with the nap, it will look different. So on this side, it'll look different because it works with the nap differently. Yeah, which I think is sort of fascinating, but I'm happy with how that looks. So I'll keep stitching that all the way around. I'll do all of my binding. We'll post a finished picture of it. I have pins stuck to my arm. <laughs> Thankfully they weren't through my arm. <laughs> I set my arm on it, it's stuck there. Um, so I'll keep stitching that. We'll show the finished picture um, of what it looks like. So I think it's a great little project for all sorts of things, um, but especially like for newbies, like for newborn babies, I think that that's, um, I think this is a wonderful little thing for that. If you wanted to add some weight to it, I think that kids would probably really like it. And because it's a little, a little textural and fun to play with, um, this would be a great one as well for like the embossed uh, cuddles that we have and anything, the dimples, they'd be sort of fun on this too. Anything that has some texture would be extra good. So. Um, Great little project, definitely time intensive, but in the end, I think that the, the finish, the finish project is going to be super great. Okay. So we had a winner. I'm going to find it over here. Um, it is Susan S from Phoenix, Arizona. If you have stuck with me the whole time, thank you. Um, I appreciate it. It's been a great project. Um, if you guys have questions on it, please leave them in the comments. We'll be back next week again. Um, I had the pattern here. It is. This is the one for next week. Okay, this is the Indigo Junction kimono pattern, and this is what we'll be doing next week. And then in two weeks, we're going to be doing the Quilt Cadet patterns. Oops, if I get them right way. This is my uh, PDF version, sorry. Um, but we're going to be doing these. So we have the Enchanted Travel Pillows, the Brecky Bag, and the Mood Pillows. Okay, and we'll be doing one, one each day for that week. So that's going to be kind of a different week in that we're doing three different projects all in the same week. So we'll run it a little bit differently than we do this time, but we really encourage that if you've got um, kids in your life, teens in your life who are interested in sewing that want to know how to sew something that is a little bit more fun, these patterns are specifically written so that they're a little bit easier to understand. You don't have to have a whole lot of sewing experience at all to get it. Um, we'll have some giveaways for that as well. I'm excited about it. And um, yeah, I think that's it. I think we're good. We got a winner. Yeah, we did. Was she there? Yeah? I don't, I don't know that she had. Okay. It's all right. It so happens. We'll I'm, yeah, we'll catch you. Um, I appreciate you guys sticking with us. We'll be back next week to do a robe. And if you have questions about that, please let me know. Okay? I'm looking forward to it. Until then, happy sewing.